Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Jed Doherty. I'm the VP of Platform Strategy here at Data IQ. Uh, I've actually been at this company for a really long time. I'm the oldest American, not physically oldest, but longest running American employee. Uh, I've seen this company grow from 20 people all the way to the, uh, the size it is now, um, which actually leads me into kind of what I wanted to talk about today. When I started at Data IQ, uh, the entire organization was very much based on personal trust. We knew each other individually. I knew literally every person. Uh, we were friends. We went out to lunch together. We all knew each other very closely. <clears throat> As we've expanded and grown, uh, now, shoot, I don't know, probably 500 of the people, uh, we've had to add guardrails because we've shifted from a personal trust to an institutional trust. So we had to create processes that would allow us to still believe in each other, uh, even if I had never met the person on the other side of the phone call or the other side of that uh, Slack message. Similarly to how we've managed to grow through creating processes to generate institutional trust, we also need to, or your organizations, need to do that when shifting from bespoke AI to true enterprise AI. And that's what we're going to talk about today. <clears throat> CEOs across your world are seeing this issue. They all know that AI is deeply important uh, and is needing to be pervasive across their organization, but they don't have the tactics or capabilities right now to actually trust what they're building. So here we see 61% of CEOs see trust as a top three priority for their organization, especially in analytics but only 35% are actually trusting what's being built. So the big focus of Data IQ 11 was to be able to provide capabilities to your organizations so that you can have institutional trust in the AI that you built. <clears throat> we could think of two different kind of paradigms uh, for building AI. Uh, one is the run free model. You have a few expert data scientists out there in the world and you want these expert data scientists to be able to do whatever they need, hit those moonshot ideas. Maybe you look over their, sh their shoulder and check in on them once every couple months to make sure they're doing something great. That works really well when you have three folks in a room or something like that. It works a lot less well when you're expanding your organization, not just to those specific expert data scientists, but to uh, citizen data scientists, marketing analysts, whoever it might be uh, across your whole organization. It's not going to be just those three people anymore. And so as you expand, you need to create some kind of guardrails. But there's a tension there, right? If you over guardrail, if you over limit what people can do, you're going to be breaking those initial data scientists' uh, capabilities. So we need some type of common ground here. What we've tried to do, especially with Govern, which was released in version 10, is build a flexible guardrail system. So Govern released in version 10 is essentially, at its core, it's a model registry that allows you to build your own governing principles around uh, releasing models. Uh, this was very successful. People have uh, started rolling it out. But it was missing a relatively large component. As everybody knows in Data IQ and probably in all AI, Modeling, the model aspect, is actually a very small portion of your overall setup. You have data ingestion, you have data processing, joining, grouping, all of this kind of work. Uh, you might not even build a model. You might build an entire workflow that just outputs a web app or outputs a new data set that everybody else ends up using. We weren't able, in version 10, to deal with all of those extra principles. All we could do is just check in and register models. So in version 11, we're super happy uh, to have expanded those capabilities to the entire project. So now, if you build a project in Data IQ, you can check that project in to govern, just like you previously were able to check in only models. This means that 80% of projects, maybe at your organization that don't even have a model, can now be leveraged within govern and can have these guardrails, yet flexibility, to ensure that you have institutional trust in the models as well as the projects that you're building. <clears throat> Let's take an example. Uh, we'll call him Billy. Billy, the marketing analyst, 
has built a customer churn model. Uh, initially, in data IQ 10, he would just check that model into govern. A risk or program man manager would manage the process of that modeling model being evaluated by the other members of the team. So an expert data scientist might check that model technically and then approve it. And marketing shareholders might also check it from a business perspective and approve it before it's released into production. Now, instead of just the model, the entire project can go through this same process. Here we see right here, checking in bundles. So some of you are maybe familiar with bundles. Bundles are versioned projects inside of Data IQ. So anytime I build a bundle, I can check it into govern and maintain control over it. <clears throat> we often think of building out models in Data IQ as, or not even data IQ, just building models in general, as a very um, bespoke process, a very artisanal process. Um, a mad genius data scientist goes off on his computer and builds something incredible, and then you assume that it's going to work and kind of let it go. <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody wants. Um, uh, this is beginning to evolve uh, from an artisanal to a much more institutional process. Uh, <clears throat> We already see uh, across uh, computer science and, and across development in general uh, a more modular process uh, taking place. And that's coming now to Data IQ, and it's coming now to data science and machine learning in general as well. Um, we've started building a couple new features within Data IQ 11 that speak to this, that speak to the ability to reuse objects. Let's have one expert build an object, and then everybody else should be able to leverage those objects, right? So hot topics right now, for sure. Uh, feature stores. Everybody loves feature stores. Uh, <laughs> at least loves talking about feature stores, and maybe uh, more challenging to implement, but they're out there. Uh, as well as being able to very easily control how you share specific objects within Data IQ across different projects. So we'll take a look at that right now. The idea here is that we want to maximize the number of reusable pieces across projects. So first, let's look at this feature store. Um, in Didaiku, now as of version 11, you can label what we uh, are calling um, feature sets and release them as a feature store. So any data set within Didaiku can be approved and then released as a feature store, which then shows up in a catalog outside of individual projects for other users to leverage uh, for part of their machine learning models. In addition, we now have a much, much greater abilities to manage shared objects. Previously in Data IQ, sharing an object was required a, let's say, a personal touch. You had to call somebody up uh, and say, hey, I need an object from your project, which I magically know exists there, and I need you to share it to my project. Uh, it worked, but there was not an institutional way of managing sharing objects. Now, if a user has built a project that they really like, they can choose any of the objects within that project to be shareable and searchable, and that ends up meaning that anybody can come in, find the objects they need, and uh, leverage them within their own projects. You also have more oversight over exactly what gets shared because you have a global list of shared objects that's very easy to see from an administration perspective. Uh, this ties in really well with feature stores, obviously. Uh, if you have a feature released into the feature store, you can also make it shareable uh, so users can both search through a feature store and then get access to that shared information. What if analysis has been in Data IQ since version 9? Nine? 9, version 9. Uh, however, we've expanded what if analysis quite a bit in the last uh, version 10, and now even further in version 11. What is what, is anal what if analysis? Uh, what if analysis allows, uh, for me, what it really does is it lets a data scientist or somebody who's built a model, it's the easiest way to communicate with the business about what that model is doing. What if analysis, if you have a model, you have a bunch of features coming into the model and then you have a prediction. What if analysis allows me to adjust each one of those features manually and see how my prediction changes? 
So I could say I could switch the gender of uh, somebody coming into a store. I could uh, change the location of, of where something exists and then see how my prediction shifts. This is a really intuitive way for business users to understand whether a model makes sense. So this has been here for a while. What we've added in Data IQ 11 uh, is this really cool ability to optimize your outcome. So I could say, all right, I'm, I know I need to hold these five features steady, but I'm gonna let the rest shift around and then I wanna maximize my prediction or I wanna minimize my prediction, hit the button, and I can find out what the rest of the features need to be to get that best value. This really lets you play, like, play with the, more strategically with a model. It's great. Uh, it also, going back to the trust concept, engenders trust from business because a business person and a data scientist can sit down and talk in very human terms about what a model is actually doing, what it's predicting, and why. So there's that optimized outcome. Beautiful. <clears throat> Another really neat feature uh, that, again, uh, invokes trust is this labeling. Um, lots of folks want to do deep learning. Far fewer folks have any access to labeled data, <laughs> especially labeled image data. Uh, it's very common, you know, we, we see all the great deep learning cool things coming out, but who's building those? Like Google, Facebook, the folks who have 100 billion labeled images, where the rest of us have to go out and label our images ourselves. As you can see here in the video, we've built into Data IQ the ability for subject matter experts, not data scientists. Data scientists, you're not going to ask a data scientist. It'd be a waste to have a data science labeling, you know, 2,000 images. But a subject matter expert, you can give them a set of images and have them label it right within Data IQ, so then we can turn around and use those within deep learning inside the tool. We can put them on top of, you know, an existing Google machine deep learning, throw transfer learning, top 1,000 images, and all of a sudden have a really good um, deep learning model for predicting what we're looking at. <clears throat> Finally, this is my favorite because I'm a coder. Anybody else a coder out here? Like writing code? <laughs> Trevaney, right here, yeah. Uh, anybody uh, have a favorite IDE? What's your favorite IDE? Any, anybody else? Thanks. VS Code, great. <laughs> um, we've, we have code studios in Data IQ now. Uh, what are code studios? We have built in the ability to run um, different IDEs right inside the tool. So uh, for, a lot, for a while now, you've been able to interact from outside of Data IQ through an API working in an IDE. But now, right inside Data IQ, inside the application itself, you can run VS Code. You can run RStudio, you can run JupyterLab, you can run Streamlit just by clicking a button. And when you're working inside of this studio, you're going to have access to all the resources that already exist within a Data IQ project. Why is this about trust? I think it's about trust because data scientists need to trust that we're not just going to put them into a tight little guardrail box. We're going to keep letting them use the tools and capabilities that they really love. I'm really, really excited about this tool, partially because I just really wanted all that nice autocomplete and Vim key bindings. It's, it's great. Sorry, too nerdy. Uh, but it's, it's very cool. So to summarize here, six new major features in version 11. Expanded AI governance by having, being able to check in projects themselves. Managed labeling for visual and deep learning. A new feature store for sharing and collaborating uh, different objects across projects. Code studios for the coders out there. What if analysis and op outcome optimization to combine interests in uh, the business side and the actual modeling side. And of course, quick sharing for all objects inside your projects. We really believe that this, these capabilities are going to help you move from a personal concept of trust in AI to an institutional concept of trust in AI. So thank you very much, and uh, kick it back to you guys.